Hi everyone, Charles here for MLU Papers. December 22nd, which is today if you are watching this video at the time of its release, is a very special day. Beside preceding December 23rd, it is the National Mathematics Day in India, designated as such for being the birthday of Srinivasa Ramanujan, a legendary self-taught mathematician who is undoubtedly one of the greatest minds who has ever existed. So first of all, happy National Mathematics Day, especially to all of our followers from India. And in today's video, we are going to uncover Ramanujan's unusual life, take a quick glance at some of his most famous contributions, and finally, solve one of Ramanujan's earlier problems, published in the Journal of the Indian Mathematical Society in 1910. As is the case for his problem and many of Ramanujan's formulas, they often look like innocent formulas with sums and products, but they underlie large parts of modern mathematics. Before we get started, that would really help the channel if you could give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. That's completely free. And again, that really helps the channel. Thank you so much. Srinivasa Ramanujan, a self-taught mathematician who forever changed the way we see numbers, it is right now on ML the Papers. Ramanujan's life. Ramanujan was born on December 22nd, 1887 in India, in what is today known as the region of Tamil Nadu, in a modest Brahmin family. His father was a clerk in a sari shop, and his mother was a housewife who sang at a temple. In case you're wondering, this is a sari. He spent a large part of his childhood between the city of Madras, which corresponds to today's Chennai, and the city of Kumbakonam, where he would spend most of his time with his mother. She would teach him all about tradition and culture, including about Puranas, which is a genre of Hindu literature, religious songs, the worship ritual at a temple called Puja, as well as the Brahmin eating habits that they religiously followed. The Brahmin diet is strictly vegetarian, with no chicken, no egg, no exciting foods for the mind such as garlic or onion, but instead includes dairies, fresh vegetables or lentils. This will be important for the rest of the story. Since the age of 10, Ramanujan stood out. He passed his primary school exams and had the highest grades in the district. At middle school, he would ace math exams in less than half of the allotted time and use his exceptional memory to learn decimals of pi and roots of Sanskrit words. At the age of 16, he was lent a copy of the book Synopsis of Pure Mathematics by G.S. Carr. He read it at the speed of light and was immediately able to start his own research on Bernoulli numbers and on the approximation of euler mascheroni's constant. He then graduated from high school with a top prize and was further described by the headmaster as a student who deserves scores higher than the maximum. That's 1904 and the beginning of a dark period of Ramanujan's life. He received a scholarship to go to college in Kumbakona. There he focused on his passion, math. He ignored all the other subjects and thus failed and lost his scholarship. He ran away from home for more than a month and his mother had to send a missing person notice to the local newspapers before eventually seeing him back home. He then enrolled in a college in Madras, but again the same story happened. He focused only on math and failed his exams twice in 1906 and 1907, leading him to become an independent math researcher who was living in extreme poverty. Until 1910, when things began to change. That year, Ramanujan was interested in a position of clerk in the office of Ramaswamy Iyer, a deputy officer who was also the founder of the Indian Mathematical Society. Ramanujan had no referral letter for the job and just showed his own mathematical notebooks instead. And Iyer's reaction was immediate. I was struck by the extraordinary mathematical results contained in the notebooks. I had no mind to smother his genius by an appointment in the lowest rungs of a revenue department. Ayer sent Ramanujan to his mathematician friends in Madras, who introduced him to the secretary of the Indian Mathematical Society, Ramachandra Rao. While impressed by the results, Rao first thought that Ramanujan had plagiarized some existing work, but after several discussions, including one with Ramanujan, Rao consented to send him to Madras with financial support so that he could continue his research. With Ayer's help, Ramanujan made his first ever publication in the Journal of the Indian Mathematical Society, which was the following short problem, which, little teaser here, we are going to solve together at the end of this video. 
He then wrote his first research paper on Bernoulli numbers in the same journal, and those were only the beginning of a long series of publications. With the recommendation of Rao and Middlemast, a math professor at the University of Madras, Ramanujan got a job as an accountant clerk for the Madras Port Trust. His job was basically to be a human calculator, which he completed quick and well, saving some time to do his own research in math. His boss and colleagues at the time were actually very supportive and further encouraged him in his mathematical pursuits. In 1912, together with Rao and Middlemast, they even tried to present his work to British mathematicians and it was not so successful in the beginning. They reached out to Hill from University College London, who considered that Ramanujan was wasting time studying divergent series due to his lack of mathematical foundations, and he recommended him some references to self-study math. Ramanujan also reached out to Baker and Hobson, both of them professors at Cambridge, but they simply didn't respond. On January 16, 1913, however, he sent a letter to Hardy, a famous mathematician at Trinity College in Cambridge. Ramanujan ignored it at that time, but that letter would change his life and the history of mathematics forever. That letter started with Ramanujan's self-introduction as a clerk in Madras, followed by 11 pages of math and formulas, to which Hardy's reaction was unequivocal. They defeated me completely. I had never seen anything in the least like them before. They must be true, because if they were not true, no one would have the imagination to invent them. Hardy consulted with his colleague Littlewood, and they both agreed that Ramanujan is a rare genius who must come to Cambridge. Barely a week after he received the letter, Hardy replied to Ramanujan, I was exceedingly interested by your letter and by the theorems which you state. You will, however, understand that before I can judge properly of the value of what you have done, it is essential that I should see proofs of some of your assertions. At the same time as he wrote the letter, Hardy had already contacted the Indian office to prepare Ramanujan's trip to England. But there was one issue. Ramanujan had no intention to leave India. Remember that Ramanujan is of Brahmin upbringing, and it was not allowed for Brahmins to travel overseas at that time. Instead, he obtained a position at the University of Madras and continued to publish his work in the Journal of the Indian Mathematical Society. But the story doesn't end here. In January 1914, one of Hardy's colleagues, named Neville, went to Madras to give some lectures. Hardy jumped on that opportunity and missioned Neville to bring Ramanujan back to England. And to Neville's surprise, Ramanujan was not opposed to the trip. He only had some doubts and fears that he needed to be reassured on. Would he have to take the entrance exam like the other Indian students, which he feared to fail as it happened in the past? Would he have the financial means to sustain? Is his English good enough? Could he remain vegetarian in England because he is a Brahmin? Neville reassured him on all those points and as promised, Ramanujan landed in England on April the 14th of the same year and almost immediately started his collaboration with Hardy and Littlewood. Next thing you know, barely three months after his arrival in England, World War I began. Littlewood, along with many other students and professors, joined the war effort. Hardy could stay in Cambridge based on medical grounds, yet the whole landscape at Cambridge changed. Every few weeks, students or faculties were killed. Trinity College hosted a war hospital. To which come some other issues which, at that point, are fairly minor compared to the casualties. Lack of vegetables, loss of interest for math owing to the war. In May 1917, things get even worse for Ramanujan, who fell gravely ill. No doctor could make a diagnosis of what he had, let alone provide a working treatment. He became depressed and even made a suicide attempt at the end of the year 1917. He was spending most of his days at the hospital, and from that time, there were month-long periods when he was suffering so much that he could not do any research. Yet, he never lost his passion for math and numbers that he considered as his personal friends. During one of the prolonged stays at the hospital, Hardy went to visit him and reported the following anecdote. I remember once going to see him when he was ill at Putney. 
I had ridden a taxi cab number 1729 and remarked that the number seemed to me rather a dull one, and that I hoped it was not an unfavorable omen. No, he replied, it is a very interesting number. It is the smallest number expressible as the sum of two cubes in two different ways. Despite the war and his terrible disease, this was the time when Ramanujan started to gain the most recognition of his entire lifetime. After receiving the degree of Bachelor of Arts by Research in 1916, which is the equivalent of a PhD, in the years 1917-1918, Ramanujan was successively elected Fellow of the London Mathematical Society, Fellow of the Royal Society, and even Fellow of Trinity College, Cambridge, which he was the first Indian to ever receive in history. A month after his election as a Fellow of Trinity College, Cambridge, World War I was over, and so were U-boat attacks, which made the trip to India too dangerous before then. And in 1919, he returned to Kumbakonam in India, still doing mathematical research whenever his health allowed him to, until his death on April 26, 1920, at the age of 32. Ramanujan will be forever remembered as one of the most brilliant mathematical minds. Driven by his passion, intelligence and hard work, he achieved some of the greatest mathematical achievements in spite of his lack of mathematical training, going through extreme poverty, wartime and critical health issues, eventually leading to his premature death at the age of only 32. Many mathematicians, like Littlewood, legitimately assumed that his contribution could have been much broader had he lived longer and spent more time in Cambridge. Ramanujan is a legend of the history of mathematics, whose name is now very well known even beyond math enthusiast circles. In 1991, British author Robert Canigal published a book on his life called The Man Who Knew Infinity, A Life of a Genius, Ramanujan, and which was later adapted as a movie in 2015. And in 2011, for the 125th anniversary of his birth, the Indian government declared that his birth date, December 22nd, would become National Mathematics Day, which is today, if you are watching this video at the time of its release. Some of Ramanujan's most famous math contributions. Now, let us see two of Ramanujan's most famous contributions. The first one is a formula for pi, given by the inverse of the following infinite sum. Now, if you want to compute an approximation for pi, you can trim the sum down to its first term, and that gives you an approximation of pi accurate to seven digits. If you want a better approximation, you can trim down a sum to its first two terms, and that becomes accurate to 15 digits. Or to the first three terms, and that becomes accurate to 23 digits. Actually, every time you add a new term from the sum, the approximation becomes eight digits more accurate, which is extremely fast and serves as the basis for some of the most recent algorithms used to approximate pi. Those include the Chernovsky algorithm, which computed more than 200 trillion digits of pi on June 20th of this year, 2024. The second and arguably most famous contribution of Ramanujan is a conjecture. Consider the following infinite product. If you expand it, you can write it as an infinite sum of powers of x. Ramanujan's tau of n is defined as a coefficient in front of x to the n in this expansion. Ramanujan conjectured that unsigned tau of n is smaller than 2 times n to the 11 half when n is a prime number. Based on the works of several Japanese mathematicians, including Kuga, Sato, Shimura, and Ihara, French mathematician Pierre Deligne finally solved it, which owed him the Fields Medal in 1978. Solve Ramanujan's first published problem. Hand on time now. Remember the first problem Ramanujan ever published in the Journal of the Indian Mathematical Society? This one? Back in the days, Ramanujan gave six months to the readers of a journal to solve it, but he never received a single response forcing him to publish it himself. Well, now we are going to solve it together. Technically speaking, it uses no more than high school math, but it requires a good deal of ingenuity. If you want to give it a try, you can pause the video right now and give me your answer in the comment sections down below. And now, here is a solution. As a disclaimer, the proof here is intuitive. Probably in the spirit of Ramanujan, and actually proving the formula requires a rigorous convergence analysis that we won't do here. Let a be the value of this nested square root. We can use the following remarkable identity, which we rewrite as this, and then as this. 
This formula will be the basis for our proof. Now let b equal to a plus 1. We are going to use our basis formula on b. Then we replace b in the formula of a below. Then let c is equal to b plus 1. Again, we use our basis formula on C. Then we replace C in the formula of A below. And so on. Now recall that C is equal to B plus 1. And that B is equal to A plus 1. If you compare the formula we just obtained with the initial problem, you clearly see that it corresponds to the particular instance A is equal to 3, and therefore, the answer is 3. Did you have it? Whether you had it or not, congrats for the effort for those who tried. Alright, that's it for today's video. It took me a pretty long time to put it all together, so if you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of the next video. That really pushes the YouTube algorithm to recommend my little channel more and encourages me to produce more videos like this one. I wish you a wonderful end of the year 2024, a Merry Christmas if you celebrate it, and I will see you next year 2025 in the next video. Cheers!